At the time of recording this video, the Derek Chauvin case is about to wrap up and the jury will be announcing a verdict relatively soon. Now, if you live in or near any metropolitan area in the United States, you're going to want to be prepared. Several cities across America have begun to proactively encourage high risk businesses to board up their windows and implement security measures. Now, cities have not issued curfews yet, but I believe this is a realistic outcome in the hours and days after the verdict is handed down. Sadly, opportunistic individuals will loot and start fires under the guise of injustice, regardless of the trial's outcome. Now, I want to encourage everyone to have a plan if riots start and they live in or near cities that could see protests or riots flare up. I just posted a poll on my channel. I'll put a link up in the cards above where I asked the community if they're concerned about potential riots after the verdict is given. So far, the results at the time of recording this video are roughly about 30% saying they are very concerned and preparing, while another fourth is slightly concerned and are getting ready a few preps and the rest are not really making any significant changes whether they are concerned or not. The original incident that resulted in George Floyd's death on May 25th of last year, it sparked protests, violence, arson events, and riots from Minneapolis to Los Angeles to New York City. Protests and vigils occurred the very next day. On June 6, an estimated half a million people joined protests in 550 places across the country. As with any socially charged gathering, a single spark can ignite a much larger flame resulting in unruly mobs, riots, looting, and large swaths of destruction. It isn't always contained within a city either. As police and government seek to maintain or regain control of the situation, Lawless crowds can be forced out into surrounding communities. As we saw in previous protests last year, there will inevitably be individuals in the crowds that will seek to take or still, knowing full well that police attention is going to be focused elsewhere or completely impaired. When this verdict is released, we could see nothing occur at all. However, given the previous storms surrounding this incident and the continued tensions, it is highly probable that there could be a real threat to public safety and private property. Just as numerous cities have warned businesses to be properly prepared, so you should be prepared too. Even if you live relatively far from the border of one of these hot zones, you have to realize that police and fire departments around the country will be focusing on these areas, and that could leave you on your own. So let's cover some practical things you should start doing now. The immediate things you can do before this verdict is released as the top off your vehicles. If fuel distribution is interrupted or you need to flee to a safer zone, you'll be ready. Be ready to shelter in place for at least one full week. When you leave work today, you might want to consider doing some grocery shopping. Top off your supplies. Get what you need now while you can and you'll give yourself the assurance that you can lock down and be safe. That means being grid independent as well. Civil lawlessness that stretches on for a long period that has the potential to disrupt all services and can make travel outside impossible, especially at night. If there's a chance of definite violence in your immediate area, you might also want to consider topping off sinks and bathtubs with water. Make sure you have candles and flashlights on hand. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher and your security lights are operational. Also, you might want to consider having some bags or containers on standby you can grab if you've got to head out quickly if things deteriorate in your vicinity forcing you to flee your home. Ideally, you can shelter in place, but have a plan to head out to a backup location, which leads me to my next point. If you know someone outside the city center and you reside in the city center yourself, you may want to contact them and ask if you can stay with them if things spiral into chaos in your city. At a minimum, you might want to contact hotels or suites that rent by the week. Once an event happens and people begin calling them, they typically will raise their rates so you might want to look at that option sooner than later. Also, have a communication plan in place and know where the family members or the members of your unit are. An app like Life360 will allow you to see the location of anyone in your group. Now, that can be very useful assuming the internet is still working. And in this case, I believe it would be to locate and connect with people who may be swept up in the conflict or unable to get home safely. Download a texting app for your group as well. This will allow you to text via the internet versus exclusively on cell service. The internet was originally built to allow for communication after a nuclear blast, so it should survive pockets of civil unrest. 
Whatever approaches you go with, just have a plan in place to communicate if the phone lines become non-operational. You should also take this quiet time before the storm to better understand how to keep your neighborhood safe. I'll post a link up in the cards above and in the description and comment section below to a video I did last year on how to keep riots out of your neighborhood during civil unrest. This video covers what you can do to protect your home and neighborhood perimeter if you are concerned with riots spilling into your neighborhood. It is highly likely that the verdict of the Derek Chauvin case will be a powder keg. If a mistrial is declared or a verdict of innocence is found, social unrest is almost an absolute certainty. Remember, when the time for decision arrives, the time for preparation has passed. Take these few days before the trial ends to prepare yourself and your family. And as always, please stay safe out there.